Thank you for a spirited discussion. <coughs> I have a comment and a question. So the comment is, who invented personal responsibility? Do you know? People think it's part of the American Constitution or the Magna Carta, but somehow this is a something handed down from on high. Who invented personal responsibility? I guess you will say the tobacco industry in 1962 because they were getting killed on the science and they had to come up with another reason to smoke. Well, no one put that cigarette in your mouth, no one lit it for you, personal responsibility. The question is, who do you want in your kitchen? The government, who will take your freedom and your wallet, or the food industry, who will take your freedom, your wallet, and your health? <laughs> This is borne out by looking at price elasticity. So if you look at the price elasticity of various food products, which have been published, fast food is the most priced inelastic at 0.81, and soft drinks are second at 0.79. Eggs, on the other hand, are the most priced elastic at 0.32. Now, all the other foods are lower price elasticity than fast food and sugar. That's telling you something about personal responsibility. That is telling you something about freedom of choice. The fact is, they're addicted. Everyone's addicted. And you can't exert freedom of choice with addicted substances. You try to do that with cocaine or tobacco or alcohol. Now, you don't want to admit the data on sugar addiction, but it's there. So, you tell me that the market should control addictive substances. So that's the question. And then the second thing I want to say is, in the study that I presented earlier, where we took the 43 children, and we took the added sugar out of their diet and gave them processed starch, so we did the experiment. You just argued, Mr. Tissot. We gave them something else. And guess what? They couldn't eat all the calories we gave them. We had to force them to eat all those extra calories in order to be able to maintain their weight. And the reason is because when we took the sugar out of their diet, they became insulin sensitive. And when they became insulin sensitive, the insulin went down so that their brain could now see their leptin. And so they were less hungry. They ate less food. They wanted to reduce their consumption. They wanted to exercise. The biochemistry drove the behavior. So my argument to you is that if you got rid of the added sugar in most processed foods, they wouldn't substitute. They would actually eat less. So I think your uh, argument is completely specious. <laughs>